Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed, and you are most welcome here. Whether you are joyful today or not, whether you even want to be here or not, you are welcome and your presence is a gift to this whole gathering. A special welcome to guests and to everyone who's worshiping at home. If you just wave, those at home will see that warm welcome, waving up to the camera, welcome. Uh, if you could please everyone fill out those friendship sheets in the pews and pass them down and back, you can see who is worshiping with you today and greet them by name following worship. We had a wonderful sunrise service today out at the farm property, and it was just a great way to start Easter Sunday. We'll be doing more services out there that aren't at the crack of dawn, so you can watch for that and join those. And a wonderful Easter vigil last night as well. Thank you to everyone who is offering music today. Um, we have Zashita on trumpet, and so we will have a, a full verse introduction to the hymn of the day for that trumpet. Thank you to Judy Safe and to the choir conducted today by Karen Seberg and all who contributed to Easter worship. Um, a few other notes. Prayers are requested today for Jim Nash, who had an aneurysm repaired and then had to return to the hospital in Rochester. Keep him in prayer. And uh, note that the, there's just a typo in the bulletin for the communion hymn. It's correct on the board. So use, use that when we get to that. And the first communion pictures are available to be picked up in the office today. Thank you to Sharon Duden for that. And we will share in Holy Communion today, and all are welcome at Christ's table. If you prefer a blessing, you can just indicate this way, um, but all are welcome to come forward for communion or a blessing. We rise now in body and or spirit and join in 365.
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I just remembered we were going to have a confession, so let's do that now, and then we'll pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. All kids, guests, every, every kid who's here, you can come on up and grab a bucket for the noisy offering, and we'll do children's sermon later.
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take in away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the word from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Please join me in the responsive reading of Psalm 118. Give us thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Together we declare, God's steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is our strength and our song. The Lord has become our salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice The second reading is from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not all the people, but to us who are chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Kids, come back up for the children's sermon. Come on up. Come on up. Thanks for doing the noisy offering, and now we have something more to do together. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. I want to tell you a story, so if you want to sit where you can see me, come on up. Thought it'd be fun to have two times to come up <laughs> and communion. Come on down, you can sit right there. Yes. All right, so can you all see? Here we go. I want to tell you a story about a woman named Mary Magdalene. And on the very first Easter, she went to the tomb. She went to a place. Yeah, she, she went. Thank you. I want to tell you this story. So Mary went to see, she was expecting to see a dead body. She, wanted, she was thinking she was going to see the body of her teacher and friend. She was expecting something really sad. That's what she was expecting when she went to the tomb. And so I want to show you something that can help us think of it. She was expecting something really sad and this is this is pickled onions <laughs> so um and i know they're 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 not bad my husband even eats them but 
I know for a lot of you, you think onions are really awful if you eat them on something, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but onions can cut, they can make you, they can make you cry, and they not, if you got this, <laughs> you can try it. I don't think you'll like it, baby. Um, if you, but if you, what, if you got this in your Easter basket, you would be sad, right? Yeah. Well, you might like to eat them, but you wouldn't, you'd, be, you'd rather have jelly beans, right? In your Easter basket? Yeah. It would make you kind of sad with the Easter bunny. So she was expecting something kind of sad that would make her cry. I but, jelly beans in the garden. Oh, yes. <laughs> you don't like them. So that's what she was expecting. But instead, she was surprised by joy. She was surprised by something that made her rejoice and happy. And now Easter jelly beans are not the same as new life, but they can help us celebrate. They can help us know joy and help us know that Jesus is risen. And you all get to have one. You all get to have one today. Yes. So you can have Okay, okay. Well, you can have an Easter egg if you would like it. Here, I'm going to get this one out of the way. And then you can go back to your seats. Here you go. Happy Easter. Here you go. There you go. Happy Easter. Jesus is risen. Here you go. Happy Easter. Yes, there's jelly beans in there. And as they go back to their seats, let's rise and sing the Alleluia a couple times. Here we go. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Here, here you go. There's one for everybody. Happy Easter. Here you go. Happy, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. But Mary stood out weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and, oh, <laughs> but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved people of God, grace to you and peace in the name of the risen Jesus. Amen. What are Easter egg hunts like in your family? Anyone else's family approach them as if they are an Olympic event? I had some very athletic cousins, so Easter egg hunts in my childhood were quite intimidating. The eggs would be hidden all over my aunt's big backyard, and my cousins and sister and I would race around from one hiding spot to the next, trying to outrun each other. I was all about the candy, but some of my cousins would leave candy on the ground in their haste to beat someone else to the next hiding spot. I could not understand this candy on the ground, but they made the, this huge race. There is some racing in our gospel story today as well. Mary tells Peter and the other disciple they have taken the Lord, and so they set out running to the tomb. At first they're running together neck and neck, but then the other disciple pulls ahead, he outruns Peter and gets there first, I've always found these details about the race to the tomb a little strange and kind of beyond uh, what's the point. But I also have wondered why it is when they get to the tomb, they don't stay long. They don't really investigate. Mary is certain Jesus' body has been stolen and something strange and disturbing has clearly happened. There's no stone in front of the tomb. There is no body. There are grave clothes, but no body. Something has happened. But they just take a look and head home. I wonder about that. Maybe it's just all too confusing and overwhelming. Too many questions. Maybe they're afraid of those who put Jesus to death. They just, for whatever reason, don't stick around. But Mary stays at the tomb. When I think about those disciples who just get to the tomb and then go home, it reminds me of my cousins racing around my aunt's backyard for those Easter eggs. And it reminds me of how often we hurry through our lives, tearing past anything that's uncomfortable, racing past what is hard. We tend to rush the process of grief we're impatient with our own and one another's pain. We careen from one news story, one crisis to the next at breakneck speed. We often don't take time to reflect, to ask the hard questions about what it all means, to stay with what's uncomfortable. But Mary stays at the tomb. She stays at the place of death that seems to be vandalized. She peers into the emptiness. Mary lingers with tension and unknowing and loss and asks hard 
questions. Where is the body? Have you taken him? Mary remains there at the tomb in all that is hard. And there she meets Jesus. There Jesus calls her by name and brings her back to life. Mary experiences resurrection. She is changed. She leaves the tomb full of hope and good news and goes to tell others what she has experienced, becoming the first apostle. It's hard to stay present like Mary does. Our instincts tell us to hurry past the pain. It's so tempting to rush to the comforts of home, the quick fixes, the easy answers. But when we do, we're like people trapped on a perpetual Easter egg hunt, racing from one thing to the next, searching for the next sugar high, pursuing pleasure, but never being changed never experiencing resurrection and new life. Resurrection happens at the tomb, at the place where things are hard. There, Jesus meets us. There, Jesus meets you to call your name, to bring you back to life, to give you real hope. Jesus meets you there in what's hard. Jesus meets you here in his body and blood, signs of his death. In this place where we mark Jesus' death, the risen Christ meets us today. We all come racing through life, yet aware of the places where pain hides. And the good news of Easter is that those are the very places Jesus meets you. God in Jesus has entered the pain and sorrow of our world to work new life from the midst of it for all of us, for you. And now the risen Christ is present to you in all things, and especially the hard things. He meets you at the graveside, the hospital, the lonely house, in the difficult conversations, and in the broken, beloved community that is the church. This means we can stay present to our whole lives, to the good and the hard. We can be with uncertainty and questions, We can remain engaged in the world past the breaking news cycle and the issue of the hour. We can address difficult topics with love as a congregation. We can support each other over the long haul of grief, chronic illness, addiction, and disaster recovery, long after others move on. That's what we do together as the ELCA in our world hunger work, our Lutheran disaster response, and our immigration work. We stay well past the headlines to do the hard and hopeful work of practicing resurrection together. The risen Jesus meets us in all the places where life is hard to raise us to new life. Resurrection happens at the tomb. Jesus meets you there. Jesus meets you here in his body and blood to wipe away your tears, to be present for you and the whole world, to bring hope and joy for today and each day. Let's take a moment for silent prayer and reflection. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
We rise now and join in our hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises. With the whole church, let us confess the faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Claiming the promises of the resurrection, let us pray. Risen Christ, when darkness overwhelms, may your dawn beckon. When fear paralyzes, may your touch release. When grief torments, may your presence unfold. When memories haunt, may your presence heal. When justice fails, may your fire ignite us. When apathy prevails, may your compassion renew. When courage leaves, may your spirit inspire. When despair grips, may your hope restore. And when death threatens, may new life arise. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who makes all things new. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Let's wave a sign of peace, share a sign of peace with those at home, and then share peace here in the sanctuary. And then we'll collect the offering.
pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Those at home, Christ's body and blood is given for you. Here in the sanctuary, all are welcome at Christ's table. You are welcome to come forward and hold out your hand for wafer to then dip into the red wine or white grape juice. If you forget, we can give you another wafer because Christ's body is given for us again and again, so do not worry. Uh, there are also individual servings of communion that are gluten-free, but anyone is welcome to those. If germs are a concern for you, you're welcome to those. You can also indicate if you prefer for a blessing. And there will be two stations the ushers will direct you up the center aisle. There is a place for you here.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we share your redeeming love with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. with you. Thanks be to God.